This is Jerry Silverman with Adobe Systems Federal. And it's my great pleasure today to speak to all of you about Adobe's latest product introduction, Adobe's new document cloud. So I'm very proud to share the stage today with my esteemed colleagues from Adobe Systems Federal, Mark Middleton and Steve Saman. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Well, good afternoon. Hi, Jerry. Great to be here. Great. So uh, now, just to get everybody familiar, the Adobe Document Cloud comprises the next version of Acrobat, uh, which we're all familiar with, and lots of great services, which we're going to cover today. But just first to reiterate here, at any time during today's webinar, you can put a question over in our Q&A chat pod over on the left-hand side of your screen, and one of our very helpful colleagues will respond. Please make sure to be as specific as possible with your question, uh, because we might not be able to get to you immediately. And also, if you just happen to be joining, I can see there's a, a lot of us in here who are coming in, please note that this webinar is indeed being recorded. So you will receive a link to the recorded version within 24 hours of today's presentation. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. Here's what we're going to cover today. So first, Mark and I are going to provide some background on our Document Cloud offerings, what they are, and what they mean for public sector customers. Next, we're going to take a look at some of the research that has been driving Adobe's product development. And that research is all around the document disconnect. After that, we're going to switch over and show you the new Acrobat desktop app and the mobile applications, after which Mark and Steve are going to show you some of the related e-signature services, which are awesome. And finally, we'll do a little bit of Q&A and provide you with some resources. So you're probably wondering, uh, looking at Adobe over the past few years, how is Adobe so invested in the cloud? What's with all the cloud business? So Adobe's go-to-market strategy is around three core businesses. You might already be familiar with our marketing cloud over on the right-hand side, which includes primarily SaaS or software and service-based tools for web content management, digital asset management, uh, web analytics, web testing, content targeting, campaign management, and a whole host of other capabilities. You may also, if you're part of a creative or marketing team, also know about our creative cloud which includes a number of popular desktop tools like Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign, uh, as well as a, a number of other desktop tools and mobile apps and creative services. But today we're going to be discussing the document cloud over on the left there. And this offering includes tools and services for working with PDF. So you've been asking, what is the document cloud? So Mark, uh, I'm hoping that you can break it down for us a little bit. Well, I'll yeah. certainly try. Um, okay, so Adobe Document Cloud is an all-new unified experience across desktop, mobile, and web for getting work done with your most critical documents. It includes the best PDF software with the new reimagined Acrobat DC, stands for Document Cloud, and our new Acrobat mobile app, allowing users to easily work across desktop, mobile, and web. The Document Cloud also includes robust enterprise class e-sign services. I'm actually going to demonstrate that. So you can fully automate approval and signature workflows. And finally, the Document Cloud enables powerful tracking for greater visibility and controls to protect sensitive information. With our strong partner ecosystem and turnkey integrations and APIs, that's Application Programming Interfaces, or HOOKS, public sector customers can connect Document Cloud to many business applications such as Ariba, SharePoint, Salesforce, and many others. Uh, now, Jerry, many of our public sector customers hear the word cloud, and well, they get a bit concerned. That is definitely true. And it's, I think it's very important for everyone to understand uh, when we're talking about Acrobat DC and the document cloud, that Acrobat is still desktop software, which is installed locally for end users, right? That way, your users can still work with PDFs behind your firewall. Uh, the cloud services component of the document cloud are optional, right? See that little blue optional down there? 
Adobe does not mandate that you use the cloud services or pay for them in any way. Uh, but that being said, we do believe that our services provide a very compelling offering for many industries, including public sector. And uh, if I say so myself, I, I think they're pretty great. And that's, they're going to be part of the subject for today. So I think it's going to be valuable for you to understand the drivers behind some of the changes that Adobe's made and, and uh, our attempt to bridge what we're calling the document disconnect. So Mark, I'm hoping you can give us some insight on what that is. Uh, sure. You know, the core value of PDF, uh, which is the ability to generate a pixel-perfect representation of a page and display it flawlessly on any screen, is just as relevant today as it was 22 years ago when Adobe invented the PDF format, of course, stands for Portable Document Format. In just the last few years, however, we started to notice several key trends. First, mobile is huge. I mean, right now we're seeing up to 400,000 mobile Acrobat installs per day just from the three major app stores. Uh, second, e-signatures are really taking off, with more than 100 million agreements processed with Adobe EchoSign, which, by the way, is now called Adobe Document Cloud eSign Services. And third, the PDF ecosystem I mentioned before is thriving. We pioneered it. And in just the last year, more than 50 billion PDFs were opened in Adobe products alone. And we're, believe it or not, we're not the only company in the PDF space. Uh, and because PDF is such an important file format, working with and managing PDF and document processes is something every public sector agency must consider. As you know, at Adobe, we're in the document business. Uh, that's why we commissioned IDC, that's the that's International Data Corporation, the premier global marketing intelligence firm, to conduct a study to find out how well government agencies were conducting their document processes. The study focused on line of business managers and information workers, that's management and the actual folks who work on documents. And in the IDC study, they, find that they found that 80% of document-based processes are at least partly depending, dependent on paper. So as a result, people are bridging the gaps between business systems in the form of faxing, scanning, and rekeying information, which is extremely inefficient. And that's the heart of the problem that IDC calls the document disconnect. This problem has some critical consequences. First, our studies show that paper-based processes are five times slower than digital ones. Probably not a huge surprise. Uh, paper processes increase compliance and legal risk. Uh, how do you know that a formal document of record is unaltered or contains the complete set of pages? In the case of a contract, how do you know that the right people have signed it? If the document is not legible, would it hold up in, in the case of a dispute in court. And there's data integrity issues. You know, rekeying information is a highly inaccurate process that can result in rework, unnecessary costs, and more. And another common problem is image-only scans, which can't be searched. And there's a direct cost for printers, scanners, ink, paper, and other consumables. And lastly, think about how much time it, it is lost manually routing paper for signature. In the IDC research, government business leaders were asked to estimate the potential impact to their business if they were able to fix the document disconnect. IDC estimates that an agency could yield a 39% increase in revenue, 23% reduction in cost, and a 16% reduction in business and compliant risk. And that's what's behind the Adobe Document Cloud. It's focused on closing the gaps in document processes across your organization, whether they're structured or ad hoc workflows. Jerry, can you provide some more detail on the capabilities of Acrobat DC and the Document Cloud? Sure, Mark. So the Document Cloud comes with these capabilities in these four key areas listed. And innovation is going to continue in these core pillars. So these capabilities are accessible through the desktop, mobile, or web clients. Uh, and for desktop and mobile, Document Cloud delivers one scalable Acrobat client that provides, like Mark said, a unified experience. So it's consistent, easy to use, regardless of which device uh, the user is approaching it on. So for larger enterprises, we're going to provide centralized administration and management through the Adobe Enterprise Dashboard, 
which is actually the same tool that allows you to manage your Creative Cloud licenses as well. So today, workflow capabilities are available for signing and approvals, and this is going to be further expanded to other areas in the future. Also supported are single sign-on capabilities, uh, which can be integrated into your user directory so that your users have a unified login experience across the Adobe Clouds. Um, and for those of you looking to leverage virtualization, like Citrix or Microsoft AppV or Microsoft UEV, uh, we've expanded our support there as well. Uh, integrations are very important for enabling an end-to-end -end solution that works with your existing document repositories. Uh, and your existing applications. So we have storage connectors available, such as the Microsoft SharePoint and Adobe Creative Cloud, uh, and we plan to offer many more of those in the second half of 2015. Uh, we, there's also a broad set of turnkey integrations for data collection and signing and approvals across a lot of different types of systems, sales, HR, procurement, as well as integrations with productivity tools like Microsoft Office, a box and Dropbox, um, and also for connecting to systems where we don't have uh, specific turnkey integrations available, like Mark said, we're publishing flexible APIs, and we also have relationships with systems integrators who can help do that custom development. So just to get on to the actual tool itself, the Acrobat DC client is completely updated and has this very fresh user interface. It's designed to work very well on the latest touch-enabled devices like the Microsoft Surface tablets and other mobile devices. We've added so many new tools uh, and updates and improved features, 41 new tools and, and feature improvements, um, of course, which is the Adobe magic that our customers all expect. And we're going to show those to you in the upcoming demo. The new Acrobat mobile app that you'll see offers the same interface as our desktop Acrobat um, with some new to mobile features such as the ability to reorganize pages and even edit your PDF document. So that's all for the spiel. I'd like to go ahead and give you guys a quick demo. So let's take a look right now. Hopefully you guys can, uh, can see my screen. I'm going to go ahead and share, right, I, I'm just going to open open up a new window and open up a PDF that I have here. All right, so this is the PDF that I'm going to share to show you the interface of Acrobat DC. So welcome to Acrobat DC. You might notice if you've used Acrobat in the past that the right-hand pane and left-hand pane are still very much present. Um, one of the things that has changed in the interface is the capability for collapsing the right and left-hand panes which is very nice. You might recognize that from another Adobe tool, Adobe Lightroom, the capability for collapsing those panes, which is great, and also for making them a little bit smaller. Right? So you can just grab here, make those smaller or bigger or what have you. So the right-hand panes and left-hand panes have not gone away. Uh, but something you might notice is that we've overhauled the tool sets and kind of reorganized them into logical groups of tool sets. So and we've also color-coded them and given them a new icon treatment, which is very appealing to the eye. So with this document that I have open right now, um, I can perform any number of these types of tasks. But if I don't see the task that I want, um, I can actually just search through it. So let's say I want to uh, reduce the file size of this PDF. I can just start typing R-E-D-U, and immediately I'll be given all of the different tools that Acrobat has that use that particular set of letters. So if I say reduce, I could reduce file size, I could optimize a scan document, um, you know, I could come in and do anything that has to do with size reduction. Right? If I click optimize PDF right here, you'll notice that I get right up in here a ribbon that gives me several different options for how to optimize my PDF. So I can reduce the file size, I can use advanced optimization, um, if this is a scanned page, I can optimize that, or I could go through my pre-site profile. So optimized PDF is actually one set that comprises a whole bunch of tools that Acrobat contains within it. 
So I really like the way that we've reorganized it because number one, it's color coded, um, and that helps me remember what those tool sets actually do. And number two, it's searchable, and I really like the searchability. And if I need to kind of look through a, a more a better interface or kind of a more robust interface, I can come over to my tools workspace, and I see over here all the tools that are available to me or all of those tool sets. So let's say I'm, a, I'm working in a government organization, and I know that my end users have five things that they do a lot. They compress documents. They, uh, they redact or they scrub the sensitive information out. They um, put them through a, um, uh, a 508 compliance check, and then they secure them. Right? So I would have to basically search within all of these tools. I'd have to say, let's see, reduce file size. And there's not a real easy way to put together a custom tool set, or there hasn't been in the past. But what I'm going to do now is just scroll down a little bit and create a custom tool. Right? So when I click Create Custom Tool, I get this nice interface that allows me to come through and say, well, I would really like to, first of all, we're going to go into uh, Optimize PDF, and I'm going to reduce file size, and I'm going to add that to my custom tool. So that first set of tools will be called Reduce. Uh, now I'm going to make another set here, which I will call Redact. And so in Redact, I'll come in and put in some of those redaction capabilities, like removing hidden information, sanitizing the document, right? so removing all of that metadata. I could also put in marking and applying redaction, but I like that pretty well right now. So that's my second set of tools in my custom tool set. Now I'll make one called 508. And I'll come into, well, let's see, I can go into my action wizard and put in the make accessible action. Um, and I can also go in to my accessibility uh, tools here. And I can put in any of these accessibility workflows right there. And so now I'd like to protect. So I'm going to make one more in my custom tool set called protect. And I'm going to roll up into my encryption. Let's see, oh, there it is, protect. And I'm going to add encryption as a custom tool. So now that I've got all of these tools in my custom tool set, I'm going to save this as my agency quick tool. And now what you're going to notice is my set of agency quick tools is now open with all of those tools ready to go. And now I've got my agency quick tools here. I can actually grab those and move them up. Well, I have to engage the tools dialog. I can move those up to the top of the list. And I can get rid of any of these tools that I want. You can also see that it's available here in my tools panel right, right here. Uh, so let's get to the actual cloud part of the document cloud, right? Because I'm, I'm looking at this document here. And you can see when I go home to my home layout, that this is now listed in my recent files. And all the recent files that I've opened on the desktop are listed here. But from this home screen, I can also see into a number of other repositories, such as my Document Cloud repository. But I did want to show uh, one more thing, right? I was just connecting with my uh, SharePoint drive just to show you that I'm, I'm connected here. Um, I don't necessarily just have to be connected to Document Cloud or my local drive or Creative Cloud or, or anything like that. I can also connect to a repository um, you know, of SharePoint, and I can add accounts like uh, SharePoint, and I'll be able to add more with our connectors. Um, so let's say for uh, argument's sake that I now have to leave my desktop and go on the road. I have to catch a train. So what I would do if, I, if that were the case, right? remember I've got my document opened here, and this is called the Prezo UX Overview. So now I'm going to switch over to my mobile device. And this has the Acrobat DC client right here um, available for iOS. I'm going to go ahead and open it up. And one of the things that you'll notice right off the bat is that that same file that I have open is now available to me on my mobile device. So I really like this. This is enabled via something called Mobile Link. Right? I've got Mobile Link on right now, 
But as you can see, with my uh, named user account provisioned, I've got mobile link turned on, right? That automatically allows me to view the recent files that I've been using on my desktop on my mobile device. So I shut down my laptop, I get on the train, I open up my tablet, and here is that exact document. And notice it opens right up in Acrobat DC Mobile. And I can do some really great things with this document. If I look in my tools, you can see very familiar tool set. So if I want to do things like, for example, edit this PDF. So we're, we're actually going to a semi-annual review and not quarterly. So right here, I can just start typing in. I can say semi-annual. And what you'll notice is we have a we had a carriage return that actually makes that bigger, but I've got handles right here that I'm just using, swiping with my finger to adjust that text frame to make it a little bit bigger. And of course, I can move this around, right? I can just pick it up and move it. Notice I get those green smart guides on the right-hand side that allow me to align it to other elements on the page. And now that I'm done, I'm actually noticing that Sarah Tran, I'm, I'm not sure that she is the correct presenter to be listed here, but I'm not 100% sure. So what I'm going to do is come in and just leave a comment. And notice along the bottom here, I've got a number of commenting tools, like for example, this little pencil tool, where I can just drag a quick line around Sarah's name. And I can also, once I say save, I can leave a little uh, sticky note here, and I can say, are we sure she's presenting? All right, get a little question mark, say save. And now I'm just going to go in and look at the pages because I want to make sure that they're in the right order. So I'll say organize pages. And you know what? Actually, page four needs to be where page three is. So all I have to do right here on my tablet is just pick up page four, move it over, and now it's been reorganized. So I've done, on my mobile device, page reorganization, editing the PDF, leaving a comment. And now if I want to get this back out into PowerPoint, I can just come right over here and say Export PDF. And now I'll be able to export this as a Word document, an Excel document, but this is going to be best exported as PowerPoint. So I'm going to hit Export PowerPoint. Right? Notice the document has been sent for conversion, and it's going to be tracked in the outbox. So I'm going to come back out here to my document, and I'm going to look in the outbox, and you can see that it's already been exported. So I will come back now to my Acrobat client. I'm going to have a look in my document cloud, and there is my PowerPoint document. So that has been exported. I'm actually going to um, I'm, I'm going to actually take a look at this in my document cloud website client. Because what I'd like to do is just very quickly download it um, to make sure that it's OK. And of course, I could send this right here and track it to Mark Middleton. Right? So I'm going to send this, send a personalized invitation to Mark Middleton at adobe.com. Right? This is my uh, right, PowerPoint deck for today. How does this look? Right? And I'm sharing that PowerPoint file with Mark directly here from inside of Acrobat. And it's going to send that directly to Mark while at the same time looking at it from the document cloud. I can just grab it. I can download it. And that's going to download straight to my desktop here. Now I've got that PowerPoint deck. I open it up and we went from a PDF into a PowerPoint with all of the comments and changes and reordering already and exported for PowerPoint ready to go. So pretty great functionality out of our mobile link and send and track capabilities. And if I come back and I want to track how, whether or not Mark has opened that document, I can go into Sense and I can go look over here and see, well, no, Mark hasn't downloaded it yet. I sent it to him but he hasn't downloaded it, maybe I can track it online to see whether or not that, that'll you know, tell me when Mark has viewed it, when he's downloaded it. Um, you know, and I'll, I'll have a little, he'll have a little bit more accountability. Uh, so let's see. Oh, looks like he has viewed it. Let's view the full activity. Well, he's previewed it. He hasn't downloaded it yet. 
but well, he definitely... you know what? It's baby steps, one step at a time. So I viewed it. Right. <laughs> so Mark, that all of that being said, I'm going to kick it over to you for the next part of the demo. Um, so please go ahead and share your screen, and and we can see some more great functionality in Acrobat. Okay. Sure. Well. <clears throat> Close in a few windows on my machine. Okay, so I'm going to share my screen here. And let's talk a little bit, let's not look at my email, let's talk a little bit about uh, signing at this point. So um, I'll talk a little bit about signing 101, and we'll uh, start with uh, a new feature called Enhanced Scans and the new Fill and Sign feature. And I'll actually start that off from a smartphone. So I have an iPhone 5, unfortunately, I still have an iPhone 5, uh, not a 5S, not a 6, but a 5, and so let me share that, show you what that looks like on my uh, device here, so there it is, and I've got, of course, Acrobat Mobile on my device, so I'll just click on that, you notice it's in the lower right-hand corner. And uh, this is my home office, which is an absolute mess, but uh, I will take a picture of a form here. And then I will use this photo, and I'm going to upload this up to the uh, cloud, and I'm actually going to create something that's fillable from here. So, And we'll actually use a little bit of Acrobat uh, magic with this, too. So let me uh, close that off. And I'll head over to Acrobat, and you notice that uh, photo one synced up right here, so I'll just double-click on it. And there's that awful picture of my... Uh, uh, and that scanner, by the way, that it's on top of is going in the basement. I don't need it anymore now that I have Acrobat DC. Uh, but I need to fill this out. So this is strictly a one-off uh, type of a thing. We're not getting signatures from other people. I just need to complete this and sign it. So, of course, the first thing I need to do is rotate it. And one of the nice things I think Jerry mentioned is you can just kind of type the tool in that you want. And I want rotate. And I can rotate it right or left, however I want to do it. And I want to rotate it right. Um, I'm going to make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. So I'll make it about 25%. You can see we've got something that is a little bigger here. But again, uh, needs a little bit of work. So we'll go into a new feature. You'll notice it's right over here. It's something called Enhanced Scan. So I'll click on that. <clears throat> it asks me what I want to enhance. There's a couple things you can enhance here. You can enhance the scan document. It does a great job of that. In this case, this is a picture. It's a camera image. So that's what I want to uh, enhance. So you'll notice that Acrobat DC will automatically try to find the edges of the paper. It does a pretty good job. I'm just going to set it a little bit. That looks pretty good. And then I'll click on Enhance Page. And just like magic, we'll get something that uh, is a little bit bigger, which is exactly what we want, and something that I can actually start to fill out, which is fantastic. So now we want to go into a new feature called Fill and Sign. That's the one right below Enhance Scans here, Fill and Sign. And this will allow me to uh, take advantage of just, uh, just a few tools we've got here on the top that allow me to add some text or some uh, check. Uh, you see a few check marks here. I've got the ability to sign it. So let's go in and do this. And by the way, I've created a profile to make this even easier for me. So for example, if I click here on text and I want to put my name here, the minute I start typing, uh, the profile name will come in and I don't even have to finish that. I can use my check mark here and I can use that. Uh, I can use my check mark maybe here, and uh, and I'll just sort of X out some of these other ones. I've got some other tools I'm not going to be using. You can see that I can circle things here. I've got a little dot that I can use. But most importantly, what I need to do in this case is sign it. So I'll just click on the Sign button, and there's a couple of different ways that I could sign it. So when I click Add Signature, I could use a default font if I wanted to and just slap that on. That might work for some applications or uh, some workflows. Uh, or I, what I could do is I could, let's see, draw my signature. Now I'm using a mouse here, so this is going to look much better on a touchscreen device like a tablet, but that's what I have to work with right now. But I could do that if I wanted to. Or I could use a scanned image of a signature. That would be my actual signature here, and I would just select an image. And we'll just grab that one. That's my actual signature. And then I could just apply that, put the date, and I'm ready to go. Here I would just go File, Send File. I could either attach that to an email, or I could use the Send and Track, which is exactly what Jerry had mentioned before. I'll attach this to an email just to give you an idea what it looks like. And I'm off and running. So again, no need for a scanner. No need to stop the presses here. If you've got to uh, create a uh, or fill in a form on the road, let's say, and uh, get it to somebody right off the bat, you're all set. Now you 
you notice this is the email that Jerry sent me, so this is what my uh, view looks like in terms of send and track from my standpoint. And I'm just clearing here, clicking here, for example, on the link. It allows me to preview the file and download the file. And as Jerry mentioned, he can track that. And especially if he's sending a number of people these kind of documents, he can track who's viewing them and who's downloading them. So a lot of nice controls for, uh, for Jerry. So this is, again, uh, you know, just 101 signatures. Let's kind of go to 102 here. So I've got another uh, form here. Let's see if we can find something good. <clears throat> and it is a, um, oh, let's see. Sample agreement, uh, we, we use this one. So very often when we're creating agreements, we're using underlines to create our form fields. I mean, there's really nothing easier. In this case, we've got a fictitious uh, organization called Geometrics. And we need signatures from Geometrics over here on the left. You can see the signature block. And we need Adobe to sign it over here on the right. Uh, very easy to make any changes. I could put, you know, organization here. Uh, and then when I'm ready to go, I just click on Acrobat, create PDF, always use the Acrobat ribbon if you can, uh, click on yes, and then uh, of course we're just creating a PDF of that, um, of that word. And another nice way to create forms is with InDesign, you can really do a lot more with it, but certainly for quick and dirty forms it's great to use Word. Great, so now I've got a form, and it's in PDF file format, but it hasn't detected any of the form fields. And we don't want to have to draw them separate, obviously, so we want to use the prepare form option, which is right down here. If I click on prepare form, it says, um, does, this require, does this document require signatures? As a matter of fact, it does. We need signatures from Geometrics and from Adobe, so I'll click on that. I'll click on start. And don't blink, it'll automatically create the form fields for me. And I can set this all up, and then I can send this out to get this signed by somebody else. So this is when you're getting other people to sign your document. So I'll double click here on this field. This happens to be a date field. And I want this to be filled out when signer 2, the second signer, in this case is going to be Adobe, assigns this. And it'll actually be dated from the server. So uh, you know, nobody can uh, change the clock, for example, on their machine uh, to a different date or time. I want Geometrics to sign it first, so Geometrics is going to be signer 1. So I'll double click here. This is a signature field, and this is going to be signer 1, and we want to make sure that it's required. Close that. This is a name field, so I'll click Name, and of course signer 1 will make it required. We'll close it. All we have to do is the same sort of thing for signer two here over on Adobe, because Adobe's signing second, make sure that's required. And we can also do the name field. We want to make sure that that's a name field and that it's signer two. And that's really it. We've got signer one over here. We've got signer two over here. And now all we've got to do is send for signature. Couldn't be any easier. I could add files here. And by the way, you can also add Word files, Excel files, image files, even HTML, just about anything, WordPerfect, about anything you could think of. And it'll just append those documents together into one long document for the signer to be able to sign electronically. I'm just going to stick with this one. I could prepare the form, but I've already done that in Acrobat. So in terms of uh, creating those form fields, that really is what prepare form is all about. And I've done that. So it's really ready to send at this point. So I'm going to click on ready to send. And you notice that it's telling me the ready to send means upload and add recipients who needs to sign this. So I'll click on ready to send. It's automatically going to upload this to the Adobe Document Cloud. So that's a big part of what Adobe Document Cloud is all about, is getting signatures from other people. And I can, I can actually get uh, 27 people, up to 27 people, to sign and approve this document. In this case, I just need two, but just to let you know, I can do that. So I'm going to have Marlene sign this. And Marlene is at gmail.com. And then I'm also going to have Steve Saman sign it. I'm just going to quickly copy his email address to make sure I get it in there right. And again, I could have 27 people here. You notice I've got this little arrow. So I could make Marlene a signer, which means she'd have to actually put a mark on the document, or just an approver where she would approve it, and that would just show up on the audit trail as part of the signing process. So I'm going to make them both signers in this case, and I'm just going to send. I could also select this document from the document library. So if you have an organization where you want to make sure that users are selecting the latest and greatest version of your documents, you would want to utilize the document library. And in this case, I'll just click on Send. 
One of the nice things about the e-sign service is that it is going to tell you at every single step of the way exactly what you, what, where you are and what you need to do next. So here it's telling me that sample agreement, because that was the name of the document that I sent, has been successfully sent for signature. Um, Marlene and Steve Saman are getting it. They will sign it in order. So by default, they're going to sign it in order. You can, you can have uh, parallel signing if you want to, but in this case, we're doing serial signing, one after the other. And as soon as the contract is signed, all eligible parties will be emailed PDF copies of the document. I could create a reminder if I wanted to, weekly, or ping people relentlessly until it gets signed. In this case, I'm just going to uh, go and sign this as Marlene. So I want to make sure that, I, in this case, I'm going to be doing it from my uh, iPhone 5. So let me uh, fire that up again here. And there we go. Make sure that that's turned on, and there's my iPhone 5. I want to head over to my email, and I want to go, let me put it landscape here so we can see it a little bit better. Marlene has a macaroni grill coupon, which is fantastic. I'm going to have to get with her and see if I can talk her into uh, being that second person there. I'm going to click on the most recent email I got this uh, from me, and uh, because I sent this document out for signature. The title is, Please Sign the Sample Agreement. Mark Middleton has sent you a sample agreement to sign. And again, it's telling Marlene what to do here. Click here to review and sign the sample agreement. After you sign the sample agreement, the agreement will be sent to Steve, and then all parties will receive a final PDF copy by email. So fantastic. So we'll click here. I'm just uh, clicking. I should have a stylus. I'm being very unprofessional here. I'm actually clicking on it with my finger. Very little is happening. There we go. Okay, uh, the good thing about um, the, the, uh, the e-sign process is that Marlene's going to be, um, she's just going to be faced with a, uh, an image of the document from the server, so there's no way that Marlene can change 1% to 5% or 1,000 to 5,000 or in any way change this document whatsoever. All she can do is just sign in the area <coughs> that, um, that that she's able to sign in. So we've only really given her a couple of things to do. In this case, uh, she just needs to sign the document. So she just needs to click on Start here. So just click on the Start button. It takes her over to where it says Click Here to Sign. So just click on here. Uh, Marlene is just going to sign this. And we'll click on Done. Notice there's that red sign button over here on the left-hand side. Done and done. And I'm making a big mess of this here. Let's just use the type uh, drive. And apply that, and you notice that it says click to sign. And once all the mandatory fields have been completed, Marlene is able to click that to sign. And she's doing that on an iPhone 5, and it's being sent out for signature. Again, we're getting detailed uh, instructions on exactly where we are in the process. It's now been sent over to Steve to sign. I can download a copy if I want to at this point, but I'm just going to hand this over to Steve. We'll have Steve sign it. I believe, Steve, you're signing it on a tablet. Is that true? That is correct. I'm going to okay. be using my uh, iPad Air first generation. Oh, great. So we're, we're mobile all the way here. So I'm going to head back to uh, stop sharing, and I'm going to hand it over to Steve. And off we go for the rest of the process. Great. Can you see my screen OK, Mark? Looks great. OK, excellent. So, so I just want to show that I do receive the similar email um, that Mark showed, showed earlier, um, you know, letting me know that I need to sign, sign the document. And I could obviously click here and, you know, and sign on my desktop. But, but that's boring. We want to sign here on our iPad. Um, I do want to remind you that. You know, as a signer, you are not required to download or install any software. You don't need the, the, the desktop client. Um, this is all built on HTML5, which means we provide this consistent look and feel across multiple platforms, browsers, uh, and devices. So I'm going to just go ahead and open this up uh, on my iPad. Again, go to, go to uh, this, this, the same email. 
And what I love about this is, you know, if you're filling out, let's say, a long form, you can actually start filling the form out on your mobile device um, and then finish filling it out on your tablet and then sign it on your desktop, right, because this is all based in the cloud. Um, so again, as Mark mentioned, I'm not able to, you know, fill out any fields that are not assigned to me, so I can't go and change the date. That date was automatically applied. The April 22nd date was automatically applied, um, you know, for, from the server. I could review here where it was signed by uh, Marlene on the bottom left. Again, I can't alter or, or do anything there. My only options are to click here and sign, so I'll go ahead and do that. Um, similar to, to Mark, and, and this is configurable on your instance, you can either uh, let your users type in their name, as you can see me doing here. Whoops. Or you can give them the option to, to, to draw their signature as well. So I'll go ahead and do that. I'll apply it, click to e-sign, and now the document has been completed and the way this workflow works is, you know, I could download a, a copy e immediately, um, but the way uh, Mark's account is configured is that all the users that were part of this particular process will receive this email kind of letting you know, hey, this agreement between X, Y, and Z um, has been completed and signed. Um, and what we also did is we opted to have, sorry about that, the, uh, the executed PDF attached to the email. Again, this is all optional and configurable um, when you set up your, your eSign account. So I'm going to go ahead and download um, the executed PDF just to show you some of the uh, security features um, that we automatically uh, implement into this. So, uh, so again, um, here's, here's the agreement, the date, and you know, I could scroll down and, and, and view the signatures. Sorry, right there. Um, one thing you should notice, it's overtly obvious, on the very top of the page, there's a blue ribbon. And this is what certifies that this document was digitally signed by our certificate through VeriSign. Um, so this ensures non-repudiation. If there were you know, any alterations made to this document, um, you would have uh, an error message here at the very top. Um, I have uh, Acrobat Pro, but obviously I can't edit the document because it's certified and encrypted. Um, if you want more information on the passwords, you could just click uh, on the security settings. You could just click on the little security settings box, and you can see all the permissions that are automatically applied. You're not able to extract pages, add additional signatures, reorder the pages, uh, et cetera. And if you want more information on the certificate, you can see that uh, below under the, the signatures. Additionally, you can click on any of the signatures in the document, and this will actually take you to the document cloud and verify that it's an authentic transaction. Lastly, you'll see that this was initially a two-page document, but we have automatically appended a third page. This is also configurable uh, based on, on, on your account. And what you can see is this is uh, what Mark alluded to as the audit trail. So this is automatically generated for every single transaction sent from the document cloud. And what you have here just gives you a nice log of every single event associated with this specific transaction. I could see when the document was viewed, signed, if it was declined, if it was forwarded, um, you gather all that type of information, including a date, timestamp, and IP address. Okay. So with that, I'm going to jump into the second part of my demonstration, and I'm going to try to make this really quick because we're a little bit short, short on time here. Uh, so what I'm showing you here uh, is uh, the actual uh, web UI for eSign services. And I just want to remind you that um, signers do not need this uh, to, to log in uh, to sign a document. This is only required for users that are going to send documents out for signature or create documents uh, for signature. Um, as Jerry mentioned, we do support S SSO, single sign-on, so we can integrate with your Active Directory or your LDAP to make the, you know, the user management process uh, much more simpler and one less password to be reminded. Um, what I'm going to be doing here, so what Mark just showed you was how you send a document out for signature to a specified distribution list. So in the second portion, what I want to do is show you how easy it is to actually embed a, a signable, uh, fillable document right on your website. So here in the, in the eSign Services UI, I'm going to go ahead and click on Create a Widget. 
And what I'm going to be doing is I'm just going to upload, I'll call this demo. And here I can actually uh, outline the workflow. So after the first person, who is the widget signer, signs the document, it will automatically route to Steve underscore Saman at yahoo.com to sign. I'm just going to go ahead and upload a, a Word document, actually. So let me just find this NDA. Here we go. Again, you can upload Word, PowerPoint, Excel documents. Um, we're, we're fairly format agnostic here. And now I'm going to go ahead and just hit Create. And what this is going to do is it's going to take me into the eSign Services UI. And this is where you normally tell um, eSign you know, where you want the signers to sign. So for example, in this Word document, you'll see that the signature fields are already included here. That's because I embedded some uh, special code. So this is telling Document Cloud that this is the first signature for the first signer. And this is the, second, or the first signature for the second signer. Again, I embedded this directly on a Word document, so, um, so, so you could use this on you know, Microsoft Office files. Now, for the sake of this demo, I'm just going to delete those real quickly and show you how easy it is to, uh, to use a, a template of fields. So I have no other fields on this document. And I'm just going to go ahead and drag over uh, my form field document template. It's a little Adobe magic. I apply it. And notice all these fields automatically get applied. Not only that, but all the logic that I have built into these fields, for example, this, this field is going to be a social security number. It's going to be a nine-digit field. And I'm going to mask the data because I consider that sensitive information. So after it's filled out, it's automatically going to be redacted. If I wanted to add more fields, it's as simple as dragging and dropping from the top bar. So I'll go ahead and add an email address for this signer. And I'll go ahead and add an email address for the second signer. Just apply it to signer number two. I hit save. And what I have now is a document here. Um, and we provide you two ways to share this document. We give you some JavaScript. And this is great for you to embed a document in your site. So I call this more of the pull workflow because you're pulling people into your site, into your portal, or into your application. And they never have to leave to sign the document. So we give you some JavaScript to embed this directly on your site and a dedicated URL. So I'm just going to go ahead and take that URL, copy and paste it into my browser. And what I'm going to be presented with is a document that I can immediately start filling out and signing. You'll see there's a progress bar on the top right, so I know how many fields I have to fill out. I'll try to go through this fairly quickly because I know we're low on, low on time. I entered in a form field. I could just click on Next to go to the next field here. So here's what happens if you enter in you know, a six-digit number, you get an error, right? So once I enter in a nine-digit number, that validation is satisfied. But watch what happens as soon as I tab away to the next field. The digits are automatically masked and, and move, removed from, uh, from the actual document. Same thing here. If I enter in data and it's not meeting the validation, I get an error. So what I love about this is not only can you make sure all the fields are filled out correctly. I mean, how many times have you gone through a document and they either missed a field or it's not legible. So that's number one. And then number two, we can make sure they're filling out the right data into the document. So here I'm just showing you some of the additional conditional capabilities. Uh, if I select blue, I have to fill out another or uh, initial the document. So this is great for those types of forms where, you know, where there's dependent fields. So I'll go ahead and just apply my initial. And if I wanted to, I could even require the users who's filling out and signing the document to attach a document. So here I'm going to go ahead and attach a copy of my uh, driver's license. Uh, here, again, just showing you some basic field calculations. Go ahead and sign the document. Again, it remembers my signature. Because I've signed in the past, I could either type it in or draw it out. Looks kind of funny. And here I'm going to go ahead and enter in my email address. And now I've satisfied all the fields. I could click the e-sign. And now the document is going to be routed to the countersigner uh, to sign the document. You can see a couple additional features. Mark talked about the reminder. So I have it automatically on by default. So it's going to send a weekly reminder to whoever needs to sign the document. 
And these alerts, these alerts are for myself as the creator of this document. I'm the coordinator. So uh, each individual user could go in and set up different types of alerts for themselves. So if you want to be alerted when the document is sent, viewed, how about if the email bounces? Maybe the recipient is no longer there, or their mailbox is full, or they're out, or they're, uh, out of the office. Um, so with that, um, I think we're also going to be providing you the ability to fill out uh, this, this example um, so that you can go ahead and experience this for yourselves. Um, I think I'm, I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up, Jeff, because we only got five minutes left. Um, so that's OK. I'll go ahead and pass it back to you. Great. Thank you. Great job, Steve. Thank you so much for that. Uh, that, was, that was really great. Uh, it, just in the last few minutes, we wanted to make sure that we pass along to you some resources. Um, so if you take a look down at the lower left-hand side of your screen right now, you'll see a, a share pod called Resources. And this has got a lot of great things for you to download, including a uh, security overview for the document cloud, because that's very important for our government customers to understand the security posture um, and all of the features and how they interface um, you know, with your existing repository systems of record and, and how secure the document cloud is. There's also a white paper for the eSign Act. So just in case you need to know about the legality and uh, of, of electronic signatures and get some history on that, there's a white paper there. Uh, we talked initially, Mark discussed the Document Disconnect research study by the IDC. And so that white paper specifically for government agencies is there to download. Um, there's also a, an e-signature, right, Document Cloud Save Time with e-signatures uh, white paper that you can download. There is an Acrobat DC product comparison matrix that you can download, and that will compare standard pro and premium. It'll compare uh, Acrobat 10 to 11 to DC. So that, that's a really good document to have. And then there's today's slide presentations, um, which you can download. And what you, all you have to do is you can hold down Shift and uh, you know, select all of those documents and click Download Files, or you can download each one individually by clicking on the document and clicking the Download Files button. There are also a couple of web links down at the lower left-hand side. One is the Adobe Government website, which if you click that, it'll take you right out there. There's that widget that Steve created for you to test out e-signing yourself. And there's also a link to the webinar series, which I'm going to talk about in just a second. So those are some great resources for you. Um, also included in the slide deck that you can download from the resources pod are these links here, things that will take you to the Document Cloud for Enterprise page, um, our Enterprise Toolkit. So if your IT people need to understand how uh, Document Cloud and Acrobat DC are deployed, and the different options for deployment. The Enterprise Toolkit is the one-stop shop. If they want to understand the difference between uh, classic and continuous releases, there's a link there that describes it. Um, they can, you can also get that white paper right there directly from that link and the Document Cloud blog and, and tutorials. Now, those tutorials are really important. I've had a bunch of questions in the Q&A chat pod about where to find tutorials. So if you check out that URL right there, <clears throat> helpx.adobe.com slash acrobat slash tutorials.html, um, you will be taken to 18 brand new videos that also some of which have uh, downloadable training assets for you to play around with. So those are great. They're right there on Adobe's website for you. And if you really like the live webinar format and you want to forward folks um, you know, to a future webinar, we've got a few coming out. Uh, on May 14th, we're going to dive deep into Document Cloud eSign services. So you'll have uh, more of Steve Saman and kind of those in-depth enterprise eSign workflows. And then on May 19th, we're going to go through the top five features of Adobe Document Cloud. So it'll be uh, summation of what we've seen today with some really great tips and tricks. So you can register for those at the URL that's posted right there on the slide. Um, I've had a lot of folks asking the Q&A chat pod about getting in touch with 
their Adobe account representative to see whether or not their agency has an enterprise agreement or how to upgrade or the pricing and licensing. So I want to encourage you to give us a call at this number here, this 1-800 number, or talk to your Adobe account representative directly. If you're not sure who that is, you can reach out via your Adobe authorized reseller for government. Um, but I just wanted to encourage you to, to reach out to us with those questions. Um, and that being said, I think we can probably move to the closing polls.